general concept is whenever you have a metal and you add something that has two parts, like a Z and another Z, or a Z and a W, or whatever has two parts, that one of those parts will attach to the metal and make an ionic compound. So it'll be like M plus and Z minus, or something like that. And this will be oxidation or reduction? Oxidation. This, these reactions are all going to be oxidation. So this is the general kind of concept. And now let me give you all the applications. Okay, and then we'll do some specific examples, but you could have a metal plus H2, and that goes to MH. And you have to balance it ionically, so I'll put a little X there. And this, just for you to know, this is an H minus, not an H plus, an H minus. It's called a hydride, not the hydronium ion, but a hydride. You can have a metal plus O2, and that makes a metal oxide. That would be like calcium oxide, uh, magnesium oxide, things like that. And this is O2 minus. Uh, you can have it plus water. Water is H and OH. So there's two pieces to water, H and OH. The OH is the part that's going to attach to the metal, the OH, the hydroxide. So this will make a metal uh, hydroxide. Uh, really, I just put an X here. And remember, OH minus. Uh, you have one kind of other way that that can happen. These are really for, let me get my other pens. This is for the alkali. That This one here. If you have an alkali earth, it, it'll look like this. And I'll show you why in a little bit. But you'll have another product. You'll have H2 as a product. Because there's extra hydrogens not accounted for, and they come off as H2. So if you have an alkali earth, you'll have H2 as a product. And I'll show you a way that, so that you don't have to memorize that. OK. You can have plus X2. In the periodic table, what does X stand for? Usually halogens. Chlorine, bromine, iodine, etc. So plus a halogen. Just notice for each of these examples, we're just sticking uh, whatever it is onto the metal. It doesn't matter what we're adding. Hydrogen, oxygen, a halogen, it just sticks onto the metal. Okay, you can do the same for nitrogen. Oops, uh, N, X. Remember it's N3 minus for this one. N3 minus. This one has a follow-up reaction that can happen. You can react that MN complex. So this one has a follow-up reaction with water. When I add water, what attaches? OH. OH. So if there's water's H and OH. The OH attaches and it becomes M uh, OH. Doesn't matter what's on the metal, it becomes M OH. Uh, and then there's going to be some nitrogen left over. But uh, don't worry about that too much. You'll have plus other products. And then there is, let's see, one more reaction. If you have the a metal that has a carbon on it, you can react it with water. So really, whatever you react with water just makes more, uh, just makes a metal hydroxide. And there's leftover carbon. Here, I guess I should write it. It has leftover nitrogen. Here it has leftover carbon, and that comes off. So the main concept is, whenever you have the metal, 
whatever's on it, if you add water, it will be displaced by the hydroxide. Okay? Whatever you're adding to the metal essentially will attach to the metal. These are general reactions. It might not be true in every single case, but they'll often be true. So let me show you a couple examples how to apply this. And, and you'll see what I mean. Let's say we have uh, potassium plus Cl2. And I want to know what's the product, and I want you to balance it. Well, you would go K, there's K plus and Cl minus. So that's going to form the product is KCl. So I don't need to write that. KCl is my product. Now I want to balance this. Balance it, I'll do 2 and 2. That's it. So I'll give you the reactants. You need to write the products. Let's try another one. Let's say we have... Uh, K plus H2O. Well, that'd be K plus and a hydroxide. What does that make? That makes potassium hydroxide. So I've got to write the ionic answer making of the metal and the thing I just added. And now I have to balance it. Um, let's see. And now if you notice, I try to balance it. What's going to happen? What, what happens when I try to balance this? There's too many hydrogens. Does that make sense? Yes. I, I can't. There's no numbers I could put here to fix it. So what do I have to do? There, there's actually another product. Do you, whoever said that is right on. Um, I've got to have an H2 product here. Oh, oh yeah, plus H2. In contrast, let me try another example. Uh, magnesium plus water. Well, you'll see this will be kind of similar. This is going to make MgOH2. Uh, because of magnesium 2 plus and hydroxide, can I balance this one? Well, I could put two of these, but what's going to be the problem? Yeah, I'm going to have, I have the same number of oxygens, but again, the H is not going to be fixed. Does that make sense? So whenever that happens to you, add H2 is a product. And I think this should fix it. Let's try another one. One more at least. We'll do more examples tomorrow. Uh, let's go, let's try another metal. Calcium plus nitrogen. Again, I'm going to add the nitrogen. Let me write the, these ions out at first. Ca2 plus and N3 minus. So that would be calcium nitride. Now I've got to balance this uh, three calcium. I can have a follow-up reaction to this. H2O at H2O. When I do that, that'll make calcium hydroxide. Remember, when I add H2O, that adds a hydroxide to the metal. Well, what will be left over, and I might not have you balance this one, but we'll have some ammonias left over in this case, because i got to do something with that nitrogen. There's uh, three calciums I'll need here. Oh my gosh, that makes uh, how many oxygens? Two, six. So I'll need six of those. And will that 